everybody, I am that nursing prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some special lab values, the BUN and the creatinine. We're also going to touch on creatinine clearance. So let's jump into the first one. This is the BUN. So what does it stand for? It stands for blood, urea, nitrogen. So what do those words even mean? So the urea is the waste product of ammonia, which is formed in the liver. Then it works its little way down to our kidneys, and then it gets filtered out by the kidneys and then removed from our body in our urine, okay? We don't need this in our body. It's like the garbage of ammonia, okay? So our BUN levels, what do they do? Why do we do these tests? They evaluate our kidney function, so we see how well our kidneys are working. So think about it. If the kidney's job is to filter this stuff out and we do a lab test and there's a ton of it in there, that means our kidneys aren't doing a very good job, right? So something we use to evaluate kidney function and to evaluate the patient's hydration status. Are they dehydrated, overhydrated, or normal? The normal levels are 7 to 20, but a special little thing here is they might be slightly increased in the elderly. So special things to note, if possible, this is never possible, but let's say in a perfect world, this is possible, before you draw this blood test on this patient, you can have them limit their meat intake because it might throw off the results. What happens if we do it and you have high or low levels? If you have high levels, it could indicate renal disease. That makes sense, right? It means your kidneys aren't working very well. You could be dehydrated, so there's not enough blood flow to the kidneys because you're dehydrated. There's a urinary tract obstruction, so that's something like a kidney stone. You could have CHF, diabetic ketoacidosis, or you could be a victim of burns, and you have lots of burns on your bodies. If you have decreased levels, it could indicate there's liver damage, you are overhydrated, malnourished, or have acromegaly. So this is the BUN. It's a very common lab that is drawn. This is a blood test, and we check it on patients where we're concerned about their kidney function. The next one we're gonna go on to now is creatinine. Now let's talk about creatinine. Creatinine is a byproduct of muscle breakdown. So you have creatine, which is a very similar looking word, right? And then after it gets metabolized, the kind of waste or garbage leftovers is creatinine, okay? This is actually a more accurate test than the BUN because the BUN, if it doesn't get filtered out, some of it can get reabsorbed. This cannot get reabsorbed. So we have a lot of it floating around in our body if we have kidney disease. So that's why this is considered a little bit more um, accurate of a test because it's a little bit more sensitive. These are the normal values, and you can see for this time, it's women and men have slightly different values on what's normal for them. Greater than two is indicative of renal disease, and that the renal disease is so bad that at least 50% of the nephrons have been affected. So that's really bad, so we don't want that. The way it's filtered out through the kidneys is the GFR, so the glomerular filtration rate, and that just means how fast can your kidneys clean your blood? So get rid of all this garbage we don't need in our blood. So if they don't do it very well, if they can't do it fast enough, that means there's something going on there, right? It means there's some sort of damage going on. And that's gonna tell us we have high levels of creatinine. When it comes to increased levels, there are some things, certain medications, that can kind of mess with your values and increase your creatinine. So if your patient is on exorbic acid, barbiturates, or diuretics, which are all pretty darn common, right? This might falsely elevate your levels and throw off your results. Or if your patient is an athlete, they're in really good shape. That's because they have more muscle mass to their body. And if you have more muscle mass, then you're gonna have more muscle metabolism, more breakdown. So that's okay. As long as everything else is normal, we're not too concerned about this level being high if your patient is really athletic. As far as too low levels, so people who have low muscle mass, so think about our frail elders, right? Our teeny tiny little elderly people who don't have a lot of, you know, build to their body. They're at risk for lower levels. Those who have liver disease, 
and then those who have a diet low in protein. So think about people who are on special diets, maybe for whatever reason, health reasons, religious reasons, whatever. If they don't have enough protein in their diet, this is going to throw off their values. And then another special thing I wanted to put on here, this creatinine I've been talking about, this is your serum, so your blood, okay? We also can do your urine. And when we do your urine, we do it for 24 hours. So this one's pretty simple, right? You just go in, you take a blood draw, you get you know, your little specimen and send it off to lab. The 24 hour urine is a little bit more complicated. It's not hard. If the patient is compliant and able to help you, that's great. What happens is you collect all of their urine that they have for 24 hours. It's important that you either keep it on ice or keep it refrigerated. And then after that 24 hours is up, then you can send that to lab. Sometimes patients are more than capable of doing this at home by themselves, they don't need your help. And then sometimes patients are not compliant, they're not capable, and you need to do this for them in the hospital or nursing home or whatever the setting is that they're, they're at. So this is creatinine. BUN creatinine, we always do them together. Now I want to talk about creatinine clearance. The last little things I wanted to talk about is like the math stuff that goes on with this. So the creatinine clearance, what is that? Really, it's just a big math equation. It's a problem where we take the level of creatinine in the urine, which is identified in milligrams per deciliter, multiply this by the volume of urine, so how much urine did we collect in that 24-hour period, so that's expressed in mLs per 24 hours. Then we're going to divide this by the amount of creatinine we find in the blood, which is then multiplied by 1440. And if you're wondering, like, well, where'd you get that random number? That is 24 hours times 60 minutes. So that's where that number comes from. So this is the equation that we use in order to figure out our creatinine clearance. And another little math thing I wanted to point out before we're done here is the creatinine BUN ratio. So a lot of times doctors will be looking at this too. So you need to be a little bit more familiar with this if you have a patient who's in renal failure. If the creatinine is high, so if you take your results and you say, ooh, that's a high creatinine, you're going to expect the BUN to be at least three times that level. So much, much higher. Remember, the BUN that gets reabsorbed, okay, well some of it gets reabsorbed back into the body if it doesn't get, you know, expelled in the urine. The creatinine doesn't get reabsorbed, so it's just kind of hanging out, floating around in your bloodstream. And just for reference, I wanted to show you the normal levels, because you see how the creatinine is so much lower than the BUN normally, so we expect there to be more BUN, more BUN, we expect the BUN to be higher just because we know it can be reabsorbed. So that was my video. I hope I broke that down a little bit easier. I know sometimes we get these lab results and we're like, it's high, it's low, what does it mean? What part of the body is this affecting? So BUN creatinine, we're thinking kidneys, okay? Urinary tract, something is going on there. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.